Good morning, all and everyone. On behalf of the Department of English, Makura Christian College, I extend my greetings and warm notes of welcome on this academic meet today. And we have a resource person among us, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Makura University, Professor Devnarayan Motopal. This invited lecture is collaborated by the Eternal Quality Assurance Cell of our college. We have Dr. Vikas Chakraborty as one of the members of the academy. And obviously we have the chief patron of this event, the principal of the college, Dr. Moti Kaurumundi. We have our head of the department, Sri Shivodhyoti Kaurumundi. I request all our esteemed dignitaries to occupy their places in the case. Sir, please. Good morning everyone. Today is 23rd day of April, the special day that marks the birth and date anniversary of William Shakespeare, the Lord of Avon. 
On this auspicious day, we have been able to arrange an invited lecture by Professor Devnarayan Mandavadhai, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Bakura University, on Sophocles' King Oedipus. Of course, there is little in common in terms of dramatic credo between Shakespeare and Sophocles, but their contrary attitudes to the techniques of drama and distinctiveness and meaning to dramatic art in general. On behalf of the Department of English, Bakura Krishna, I heartily my direct teacher and the academic and administrative head of our mother university, Professor Bandopadhai, for giving us time for a lecture in the midst of his extreme busy and hectic schedule. On the dais, we have among us Dr. Fotik Boron Mondol, Principal, Bakura Christian College, whose constant academic and administrative support and inspiration always motivate us in all ways. We have among us Dr. Vikas Chakraborty, the representative of IQAC of our college, the collaborator of this academic meet. I welcome him on behalf of our department. I would also like to welcome all my colleagues in the department, academicians, patrons of education, many scholars, dignitaries, who have already been connected with us on YouTube and last but not least, my dear students, for whom this lecture is chiefly intended. I am certain that all of us will definitely be enlightened by the lecture of the Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, and it is going to be a wonderful experience for all of us. I sincerely believe that this intellectual exercise will reap rich harvest for students, scholars, and teachers alike. Thank you all once again on behalf of the Postgraduate Department of English, Bakura Christian College. Thank you. Thank you, Now may I request the chief patron of this event, our chief motivator behind all our academic exercises, the principal of the college, Dr. Koti Koran Mondal, to deliver his address, sir.
একটা হলিস্টিক ডেভেলপমেন্ট সেইটার ব্যাপারে আমি পক্ষপাতি এবং আমার মনে হয় না কোনো একটা জায়গায় বড় হলে যে বিশাল কিছু বড় হয়ে আমার যাবে সমস্ত গেলে সমস্ত সিনেমাটাকে ইন্ডিকেট করা সেটাই একটা লোকের একটা সমাজের পরিপূর্ণ উন্নয়নের সূচক হতে পারে তো স্যার অনেক স্পেশালাইজড জায়গায় বলবেন আমি জানি যে স্যারের বক্তৃতা আমাদের সবাইকে উদ্বুদ্ধ করবে নতুন করে মাস্টার কাজে মন দেওয়া সমাজের উন্নতির জন্য মন দেওয়া এবং একটা কথা আমরা যেন ভুলে না যাই যে আমরা যা করছি সবাই আমাদের পরিবার আমাদের সমাজ আমাদের দেশ আমাদের জন্য সবাই প্রকৃতি ভালো জন্য এই করি কথা তোমরা মনে রেখো এবং যে সময়টা শেখার সেই সময়টাকে হেলায় নষ্ট করো যাই করো রাজনীতি খেলাধুলো সব কিছুর উপরে পড়াশোনাটা একটু ওপরে যাবে আর এইটুকু বলে সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ জানি আমি আমার একটু বক্তব্য Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. May I now request Dr. Vikas Chakramurthy as Associate Professor of Physics and a Steam Member, IQSC Doctor Christian College, to deliver his address as the collaborator of this event, sir.
Wordsworth House was the first of the second brothers of house by the judges. I request a esteemed member of IQSD, Dr. Vikash Chakraborty, to hand over that trophy to the captain, vice captain, and coordinator of Wordsworth House. I request senior faculty member of the English of our college, Dr. Raman Parampati, to formally introduce our honorable vice chancellor, sir, though he needs no introduction, but this is just a routine formal exercise on our part, sir, please. Good morning, all. Yes, exactly what the audience has been. Third, needs no introduction here. Still, since it's a formal program, I have to say a few words regarding this academic career, of course, not as an academic administrator, because I am not in a position to comment on that. I feel privileged, honored, and also unknown. In fact, Sir is himself a name and really needs no introduction from our end. But again, this is a routine formal exercise on behalf of the department. We were taking this position on the first vice center of Bangalore University in 2014. Sir held numerous other official positions. And in this context, I am reminded of his visit to Bangura, uh, to Bangura Christian College just on the eve of our permission for postgraduate department. I remember Sir King as one of the members of that particular committee assigned with the responsibility of inspecting the uh, infrastructure here and allowing us to start postgraduate course in our college back in one thousand I remember. To name up to you of his achievements, he was tried as head of the Department of English in the University of Badawan. He was the director of the Academic Staff College of the same university. He was the coordinator of UTC DRS research programs. Professor Mandukatai had been visiting research fellow of the University of New Wales, New South Wales, an OD of the UK, UK, India. Educational Research Initiative Project on Gerontology. He was an honorary adjunct senior fellow in the School of English Communication and Performance Studies, Monas University of Australia, and our Canavati of Andrew Tanax Hill Fund Visiting uh, University, of Glass, uh, University of Glasgow. Sir, having a full bright fellow visiting Northern Illinois University in 2013 and also an Australia India Council visiting fellow in the University of Melbourne and other universities as well. In fact, it goes without saying that Sir is widely, widely published both nationally and internationally and he is also a creative writer and many of his poems have been published in different journals. The academic Team date looks up to, sorry, the academia team date looks up to serve as a person having extraordinary mastery over the classics and the Department of English Bangalore University, Bangalore Christian College also feels really honored to have Sir Sponsor to deliver a lecture here on some of these TV demands. So that way I introduce so and now it is up to my teacher and also Thank you very much for this very wonderful introduction, which possibly I do not deserve. Very warm welcome. I'm really moved by this. 
Uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, I've been asked to teach King Oedipus. Um, it's really very, very difficult to teach this play within two hours. How, however much I try to cramp the time into a particular framework, it is absolutely difficult. But I would like to uh, take up some of the significant aspects which we should try to consider when analyzing this particular play. Let me begin with a very simple kind of remark and that will take me to some other areas of discussion. I have read this play throughout my student and teaching career again and again. And I have seen that the play unfolds many different implications every time. It unfolds many different implications which I did not consider earlier. That actually makes the task of reading the play very difficult. Because every time you go over to the play, it again and again unravels some other areas of thought. This happened this time as well. I read the play first in 1973, long back, and uh, I must owe my indebted indebtedness to one of the very significant classical scholars under whom I worked. He was one of the most remarkable teachers knowing five different classical languages, Professor R.K. Sen, Greek, Latin, Sanskrit, Arabic, four, four different classical languages. And I was also initiated to the study of classics. And uh, I had to learn bits of Greek and bits of Latin, all, uh, uh, I mean elementary Greek and elementary Latin. However, as I said, since 1973, I've been reading this play again and again. I taught this play I taught this play in Bhagwan University for quite a long time. I taught this play at Calcutta University for around a decade. And therefore I had to reread the text. And as I said, the text came up with many different new complexities which I had to once again consider. This time, this time, when I was reading the play, a particular uh, theme really came up to my mind. And I 
really came across the play, the interaction of a very distinctive uh, thematic uh, association, and that is called. Words, three Greek words. The first one is propompoi, which is P R O P O N O P O M P O I, P O I. And the second one is hiketai. Ekhane dakhano jachche na. Hike ai ai ka ekhane ujjam na hopes. Karon there is a space. Ekhane space actually. So that's why it will be pronounced as hiketai. H I sorry H I K E T A I. That is the pronunciation. Another word you can see. The third one is theoria. Theoria. T H E O R I A. So these are the three. And later I, when I just began reading the text, I found that. There is a very wonderful interplay of these themes: Lopompoi, Hiketai, and Theoria. And these are very definitely mentioned by different kinds of critics at many different places, especially R. C. J. Because I always go by the Translation and the Greek edition of R. C. J., who was the most renowned scholar in Greek. Now, what does it mean? Why do I, especially, take up these three words, and why do I want to begin with this? This idea, Lopompoi, actually means a religious. A ceremonial procession. It means a religious, a ceremonial procession, which actually occurs normally at the end of the tragedy. For instance, I can very definitely refer to Iskilas. You have heard about Iskilas, Acha? Era. माने कोतुंदा की इंट्रोड्यूस आने की चीज़ जानी है और टेक्स पोलेज मेरे किसी जाने था ना माने ग्रीक ये चीज़ बोलो बैकग्राउंड में चीज़ जाने नाउ एस आई सेड इसकी वर्ष रोट अ प्ले कॉल यू मेनाइडीज यू मेनाइडीज एम ई एन आई डी ई एस you actually means kind good etc e you for instance jemon amra boli you for me mane good sound sweet sound so you menides the kindly ones the kindly ones you menides actually is the last Play of Iskilas's Orestian trilogy. Iskilas wrote three plays on the 
royal house of Orestes. Orestes actually was a very traditional, traditionally respected king, and his the story of his household. This is the story of the household of Labdacus. L A B D A C U S. A prokome yachetwane. Ancient Cadmus, etc. Labdacus of Ale. So it tells of the story, tells the story of the house of Labdacus. I'll come to this. Now, normally as I said, Bokum boy occurs at the end. The Shab Shekhaikana tragedy then begins a procession. It becomes a kind of ceremonial procession. Normally by the Koryk singers at the end. Yamun Amadar Nidusha Varshane, in Mani Ingridi Varshane, if you read modern the cathedral, you will find that Elliot is trying to reconstruct this idea of the Kokombo. And if you read the play, Tomashawai played a Korejo, so you find that Oedipus comes first and begins to talk before the assembled people. And this actually creates the impression of a ceremonial procession. The ceremonial procession led by the led by the leader of the group, the priest. Right. So that's why you can see that it is not exactly the normal kind of chorus, it's a different kind of chorus. The chorus constituted of the members of the temple. The priest. Yamun Mahade in the cathedral, the Meshkani Tai, Abhay, Dakanabhay. So, therefore, it begins with that. So, Oedipus starts by saying, My children, descendants of ancient Cadmus. A Cadmus Babataki. A Cadmus comes to Dabatai Hindu when I look at it right now from uh, in terms of my newest reading of the text, I find that there is a very definitive religious Kathanik Walahoy. Amadar Pakke, Tomadar Pakke, Dhoradako religious. A sort of religious association. And here we find that the people have come Haiketai. A Haiketai, this actually refers to the healing pilgrimage of an individual. The people have come. Why? Because the plague has started. And there should be a proper healing for that. And therefore, who is Oedipus now then? Oedipus enacts the role of a healer. That is the Pharmacoid. the healer. the pharmacy, etc. I want to show millet. So therefore, he is the healer, and therefore the religious ceremonial procession has started in front of Oedipus. Though they have come to the wrong person, but he will heal. But he will heal in any way. So therefore, we have come to the last theoria. Here theoria means the sacred activities of the delegates on behalf of the state, the sacred activities on behalf of the state, of the delegates on behalf of the state. So the priest is not alone.
the priestess there with his people, representing the state. So therefore, there is always, if you look at Jaina, the text of Arachitina, um, in line number 60, the priest says, O chief of men, restore, restore. That actually, this idea of restoration, and Oedipus is considered to be the pharmacon, and therefore he should try to restore. Therefore, in this manner, we actually should ask, who is this Oedipus? What, how does he become the healer? And what are the sources? And how does Sophocles use the sources? He had too many of sources, multiple sources. And therefore, I would refer to some of these sources. The first, the primary source, the primary source is the Iliad, is the Iliad. In book 11, in the 11th book or 11th canto of Iliad, I'm sorry, it's the, towards the end, it's 23rd book, 23rd book. So in the 23rd book, refers to Oedipus. In what context? We find that a huge destruction has already taken place. Achilles has taken his, his revenge for the death of his very close friend Petroclus. And he has therefore killed Hector. And then he began to, I mean, move the dead body of Hector around seven times. Kind of a ritualistic act. He does it. Now against the background of this violent act, Homer suddenly refers to King Oedipus. Now, I would try to give you some of the lines Yes. Here, in, in Iliad, he refers to the myth of King Oedipus. And Homer says that yes, he was a great king. And he ruled for long 18 years. And he was a successful king. Though there had been different kinds of allegations coming against him in relation to his birth and his marriage, but he continued. And his son, it also refers to his sons, Polynices and Ethiocles. Now, I will talk about this later also. Here, he said that yes, Oedipus died. Oedipus died in a war, and it was a violent death, like the violence, as you can see here. So therefore, that actually shows that it has been a pre-Homeric tale. It has been a pre-Homeric tale. Se Homer, je ta epic ta likhe chilen, Iliad, she likhe dhara hai, it was around 7th century BC, approximately. 
It is normally regarded as having been written in 7th century BC. And at that time, he describes the story of Oedipus. That means it was pre Homeric. The Homeric Argetiki, the 7th century BC Argetiki, a god book from a Yantu. It was a Kamun from a Yantu. That he became a king of Thebes, and there was a problem in relation to marriage and birth, but he continued. It didn't affect. He just continued for, and he reigned for 80 years, and he died in a war. It was a violent death. So this is what he says. And then I will refer to Odyssey. In Odyssey, book 11, line number 271, similarly it says that Oedipus didn't mind. He continued to rule. He continued to rule. Why didn't he mind? Ever a connector using the Well, the sons and daughters, Malahoche out of his out of his union with Yogasta, his mother, he, they had four children. Keke, Polynices, Ethiocles, and then the daughters, Antigone, his men. These were the, I mean, sons and daughters. So that becomes a kind of, in Greek, in Greek it is called anathema. A N A T H E M A. Anathema. Anathema means cars, pollution, sin. So it was considered to be sin. But Odyssey brings about a new kind of idea. He says that well, Yogasta was a namesake queen. But his actual queen was Epicaste. Lipokina or Liketu Lavni Dekabachanaka. E P I C A S T E. E P I C A S T E. Epicaste. And not Jogasta. Epicaste is another wife gave birth to the four children. This actually once again complicates the whole idea of the Oedipal myth. And then another contemporary of Homer, Hesiod, who was quite famous for his book, Work and Days, sort of labor's song. I think, yeah, what's the kind of book? So, Hesiod, Hesiod also makes a very passing reference to the war between Polynesus and Ethiopians. On, and then I will refer to, so we find Homer, Referring to Oedipus story twice in Iliad and in Odyssey, and also Hesiod. Here, Kara, Homer, what's it? So, we have a big cut of a big poet, and Hesiod was quite famous for his labor songs and for the genealogy of gods he created. Work and days. He also refers to the Theban story of Oedipus and he makes a passing reference to the war between Polynesus and Ethiopians. And then another source. This is, there was, as I said, I told you that it was pre-Homeric. 
হোমারের আগে থেকেই এই গল্পটা চলছে এভরিবডি ইস নো অ্যাবাউট দিস অ্যান্ড সো দেয়ার ফোর উই ফাইন দ্যাট দেয়ার ওয়াজ এ থিবান সাইকেল যাকে বলা হতো থিবাইড টি এইচ ই বি এ আই ডি মানে কি এই আই ডি কথাটা যখন দেখবে তখনই এই যেমন ইলিয়াদ মানে কি এলিয়াদ কথার মানে কি এটা যদি আমি জিজ্ঞেস করি তোমার আগে এলিয়ান কটার মানে হচ্ছে দ্য ব্যাটল ওয়াজ ফট ইন দ্য সিটি অফ ট্রয় ইন দ্য নেম অফ দ্য টাউন ওয়াজ ইলিয়াম আই এল আই ইউ এম ইলিয়াম আর এই ডি কথাটা লাস্টে হচ্ছে এটা হচ্ছে গ্রিক কম্বিনেশন মানে সন্ধি যাকে বলে আমাদের দেশে দ্যাট অ্যাকচুয়ালি গিভস ইউ এলিয়াড আর্ট মিনস সং তার মানে ইলিয়াম শহরের গান দ্য সং অফ ইলিয়াম that is that becomes iliad you only in it virgil said it what does that mean ineas is the hero of the epic id mane song song of ineas ineas had gone ramayana tai bola hoy ami jani na uta amar master ni to here it is thibaet that mane song of thieves it is the thibaid the theban cycle the theban cycle so that shows that it was quite popular and the and on the basis of this theban cycle there was oedipodia oedipodia acha oedipus kotha mane tumra jene chho ja oedipodia so here also the song of idipas the song of idipas now here in oedipodia again we find that jocasta did not give birth to the four children right another name comes it was the birth was given by eurigenia actually eurigenia e u r y g a n e i a eurigenia e u r y g a n e i a so we get two other names isn't that so we get epicasti we get eurigenia Now, why is this? It is a very bad thing. Sometimes we find that they are the I mean, children of Oedipus and Yocasta. Sometimes it is said that no, Yocasta actually is not part of this. She is just a queen designate and nothing else. And she, he had other wives. sometimes it is a picasta sometimes it is eurigania so what does that mean now it has been suggested that perhaps it is the politics of the dorians a dorians the ne tale khub chotto kore boli karon eto shomoy nei ah ah ha jor ta Now, the mainland Greece, by migrants, outsiders, invading races, from 2200 BC. And when we say from Ajana, since 2200, since 2200 BC, that began to be invaded. and as a result different kinds of tribes began to enter jemon india theo shona jay ei totter bapare ami kichu bolte parbo na kintu india theo shona jay je around that time by 2200 bc oi around that time frame a large group of invading races 
began to migrate for different reasons from Central Asia, from other parts, and they ultimately reached through Greece, through Persia, Iran, and Hong Kong to India. That's a kind of idea. But it gives us an idea that there was a kind of migration around 220 to 100 places, and this migration was never peaceful. It was never peaceful. So the first migration actually came up in 19th century BC and it was a terrible attack, especially an attack by the Dorians. These Dorians actually brought, brought, brought the idea that they are, they have, some of the Dorian kings began to claim that their ancestry may be linked up with the, with the house of Labdakas. Okay. Tahule Dabatari to unnarakum claim hoega. Dorian sa shab bhaiyungo chokti shali, chadik shab dhamsha mora dicche, yaakone bhi. He said, Chiara Dai Palte Kalo. So therefore, all these people began to claim that their ancestry may be linked up with the royal household of Miladakas. Mane, Oedipus household. So that's why they wanted to somehow remove this moral stigma. They wanted to remove, that's why they began to I mean, raise this kind of idea that, well, no, it was married, Yogastra, that is true, but she was just a queen designate. Erebe Shikichunot. He had his wife, and these children were their offspring. So that's why you can, you can relate yourself of all kinds of moral things. So that's why we find that there might be a politics of Dorians that they refabricated the story. They began to refabricate the story. And I would also refer to a lost epic. Some fragments have survived. That's called Cyprian Lays. C Y P R I A N, C Y P R I A N, Cyprian Lay, L A Y S, gone. So Cyprian Lay's, there also we find the story of the powers. So, but it actually gives us a kind of small scattered reference to Oedipus. But it is, this is it. This is the source which was mostly used by the Attic, meaning the Athenian dramatists. This was the source. A Cyprian lays bolam, jate malamutre peri oyete paum, on Oedipus, well, I can show you. Peri Oedipus, Peri Manoj on, that periscope is a holy number. But a Peri Manoj on, Peri Oedipus. So therefore, Oedipus, it means on Oedipus. So therefore, they are the kind of pattern which was created by the unknown author or authors of this floating Cyprian lays was used by the Athenian dramatists, by the Attic dramatists. And I will next refer to a particular song, Thibayat. T-H-E-B-A-I-D, Thibayat. 
Song of Thieves. This is the source which was again taken up by the Attic dramatists because its emphasis was on Anathema, the gods in the family, the gods in the family, in the house of love jackets. And third, they once again actually depended on Pindar, another Greek poet, P-I-N-D-A-R, P-I-N-D-A-R, Pindar. He wrote quite a number of poems and they are called Olympian poems, Olympian songs. Tell us how internet power And there, in Olympian songs, song number two, there is a very distinctive reference to the destruction of Oedipus as a result of operations of destiny. That is Greek Pasha Bolahoi, Moira, M O I R A, M O I R A, Moira, destiny. So, therefore, it is the operation of Moira. It is the operation of, therefore, Moira comes to be related to. Dike, justice, D-I-K-E, which is Plato, one of the things So therefore, we find therefore three things. Number one, Cyprian Blaze, where we find the story of Oedipus, and that comes to be used by the Attic dramatists. Then comes Thibayat, where from which they took up the idea of the cars. And then comes Pindar, from which they take up the idea of destiny. And that actually creates a dramatic material. Earlier it was not dramatic. Kyanu dramatic chiluna because it was epical. You must remember that Sophocles, Aeschylus, all of them have been fighting, have been fighting against a very strong generic tradition. And that generic tradition has been the epic, the long so longer songs. So it was a tremendous kind of task for them to negate the epical and establish the dramatic. So therefore, they have been trying to find out how they can create the sense of the dramatic by replacing the epical. That means it was a challenge against the Homeric tradition. And it was a, an establishment of the Thespian, Aryanian tradition. Now, coming to Kanjetushra, so therefore, we find he, for the first time, so therefore, Pinder once again introduces another thing. You may remember a very vital part in the play. That is, that is how Oedipus emerges in Thebes, coming out of Corinth. Corinth ke eshe, Oedipus emerge good and becomes the king of that place. How? By destroying the stings. By destroying the stings. Now this story of the stings was again provided by Pindar. Again this was taken up by the dramatists. Because I tell you that 
it was not just Sophocles who is writing on Oedipus. All of them know. All of them. So let me refer to Aeschylus. Aeschylus actually was very much fond of writing trilogies. He was very fond of writing trilogies. And the story of the family. I am going Orestean Trilogy, the family of Orestes, which begins with Agamemnon. So therefore, there we find that, that there is a curse in the household. Aeschylus actually begins the idea that it has got dramatic potential if we use the curse. And curse means the fulfillment, fulfillment of the curse. So therefore, he writes three plays. Number one, Laius. Whatever Greek name Laios. L-A-I-U-S. Laius. A boy chan. Kichu kotha gwee chan. A shom master. Number two, Roche Edipas. A kind of quiet verse. Ruet. Some verses are there. Then first actor play is a trilogy. This is a trilogy by Aeschylus. Then the Kyoto first layers, where we find some stray words. And the second play is Elibus, where we come across some verses. And finally, this is the most famous play, Seven Against Thieves one of the most important plays of Aeschylus, Seven Against Thieves. A Seven Against Thieves was the Pudache, the story of their children, Mane, uh, Eteocles or Polynices. Polynices. The battle of Polynices and Eteocles, that has been put here. And here we have a long passage. I mean, again, Bolander, the first play has just a few words. The second play, 80 words. Only three verses remain. And in the final one, Seven Against Thieves, here we find that there is a long passage. And line numbers is, line numbers are 772 to 791. And it gives, this is the play through which we can get an idea of the Ischelian perspective on the Oedipus material. I'm not talking about the play, I'm talking about the material, the Oedipus material. So it is in Ischelus, as it was quite familiar with him to do. Here we find the operation of Erinnys, E-R-I-N-N-Y-S, Erinnys. Erinnys actually refers to the agents of punishment. That is Shadabangla Nemesis Bala. Erinnys actually are the divine agents of punishment. As I said, that there should be, there is a moira destiny. There is, there should be justice, daiki, but in between. Who will ensure the justice? I mean, there is destiny. And I know that it should be just, there should be justice. But who will ensure that sense of justice? Here comes the divine agency of the Irenaeus. E-R-I-N-N-Y-S. Irenaeus. So therefore, we find that Aeschylus actually treats this story in terms of the Homeric pattern. They cannot move away from that. Because in Homer also the same kind of pattern, that same idea, the guilt of Paris and the punishment, 
So therefore you can see that he uses the tradition of anathema, the tradition of gods in terms of the Homeric tradition. So however much that he is writing a play, a drama, and although Gilbert Murray has again and again branded him as the creator of Greek tragedy, yet he makes a very wonderful attempt but cannot really move away from the Homeric tradition, which is ultimately done by Sophocles. So Sophocles never writes a trilogy, either from a clear way. Sophocles never wrote any trilogy on Oedipus. All of them were separate plays. All of them were separate plays. So you have um, King Oedipus, then Oedipus, sorry, yes, Antigone, Oedipus and Colonus, but they were all separate plays. Oedipus for the first time, uh, sorry, Sophocles for the first time challenged the Iskelian tradition of creating a trilogy. So therefore Oedipus is a self-contained drama having a very distinctive structural pattern. Right. So it does not, it is a play, it is complete and it does not either look back or look forward. But when you read, say, Lanius, you have to look forward to Oedipus. When you read Oedipus, you have to go back to Lanius and again look forward to Seven of the Steels. So that means it's never self-contained. And in other words, it creates an ethical cycle, the long traditional generic ethical cycle. You are part of this. Right. So therefore, therefore the journey acceptable how there are two kinds of I mean patterning. One is eschatological and another is teleological. Eschatological, E-S-C-H-A-T-O-L-O-G-I-C-A-L. Mane bolche. E-S-C-H-A-T-O-L-O-G-I-C-A-L. Eschatas. Mane bolche N. Mane bolche N. A logos hoche ekhane. Logos ekane mani hoche knowledge. Logos kotana onik mani ache. Logos means what? Our logos means knowledge. To that extent, Greek language is very, very flexible. So it is the knowledge of the end. But at the same time, there is teleological. T E L E O. L O G I C A L. Telos kotana trike teleo. Telos again means end, right? And logos means knowledge, knowledge of the end. So therefore, eschatological refers to a knowledge of the of the end in view, of the end in view. That's why I remember. Homer's Iliad. So therefore, in the Iliad, you find that it's the story that you are the confine. You are, you, are, you are fighting against the Trojans, Troy, and you are once again centered in the city of Ilium. And it begins with, begins with that crisis in the Greek can and ends with the death of Hector. So this is how the structure is eschatological, where time and history can be foreseen. But in teleology, it is not possible. It's a long end and not in view. So the Aristotle poetics more structure of 
ये कौन से ड्रामा बिगिनिंग मिडल एंड सो बिगिनिंग द ग्रीक वर्ड इज आरके जब तक आरके टाइप आल ये सब वाटर मिलन में बोली एंड द मिडल इज मेसोन एमीएसओएन जब तक ये अपना मेसोपोटेमिया बोली पोटेमस माने रिवर नो दी जॉल सो इन बिटवीन रिवर्स टाइग्रिस इंफ्रेटिस तब मार्च करने the land that is called mesopotamia so and the loss the end right so therefore you can see that edipus as i said that in iskilus's pattern you always can you always have to either look forward to something or go back to something either you look back or you look forward you have to do this so therefore when you were reading liars you were looking forward to edipus and when you were reading edipus you have to go back to liars and look forward to seven escapes but here no it is a self contained structure you don't have to go back to anything you don't have to look forward to anything so that's why structurally more cohesive so therefore there are other places like the university colonas there are antigone but you don't have to bother about that because it's no part of your i mean of your perspectives so therefore uh i will now refer to uh First of all, let me refer to the House of Labdacus. A House of Labdacus, Labdacus. एक ना तो बोर्ड का डायलॉग में तो पास ही ना उसका पेशन लेके उठेगा बाबा। लेके पास। So House of Labdacus. I'm an old school teacher, so therefore I still use blackboard and. प्रथम my children descendants of ancient cats descendants of ancient cats it is the moral that this is absolutely ironical he is i mean addressing them says that you are the ancestor of the of cats yeah sorry you belong to the house of cats descendants of ancient cats Where is the irony? He himself also is part of the house without knowing it. He himself is part of this house, and it has been pointed out that the entire family of Cadmus was cast from the very beginning. Now, why was Cadmus a Cadmus? Cast because 
he destroyed and killed this serpent. The serpent preserved by Ares. A R E S. Ares. He killed the house of the serpent, household serpent of Ares. And as a result, Ares cursed him. So that is the household serpent actually is a, here a religious symbol of fertility. So that symbol of fertility came to be destroyed by Cadmus and he was cursed. That there will be, what was the cause? There will be always a curse in the family. The curse causing bloodshed. That was the curse and that was given by Ares. And then we come to, after Harmonia and Cadmus, we have their son Polydorus. Polydorus. Polydorus actually managed many gifts. Dorus, Kothakar managed gift. Polydorus. And Polydorus's son was so you have Harmonia and Cadmus. Cadmus's son Polydorus, Polydorus's son Labdacus, and then we have Laius and Oedipus. So Laius and Oedipus. Now here, Cadmus actually was cursed because he destroyed the ancestral symbol of fertility belonging to Ares and was cursed. And then once again the curse comes with Laius. Now Laius at that time was in a very terribly disturbed situation after the death of his father, Labdacus. And he was given a shelter by the king Pelops, P-E-L-O-P-S, by the king Pelops. Pelops actually gave him shelter. But unfortunately, Laius left the son of Pelops, whose name was Chrysippus. C-H-R-Y-S-I-P-P-U-S, Chrysippus. As a result, Pelops once again gave him the cards. So the cards began to, I mean, continue in the family. And everywhere there is a breach of trust. And this particular, I mean, genealogy of the family shows that there has been again and again the problem. And I would also refer to uh, to another particular aspect. We have seen um, as the play progresses, we have seen that Yokasta recounts. Yokasta recounts how Laius went to the temple at Delphi to get directions. Right. And he was killed, which was falsely reported by a gang of robbers. But that was not true. So he was killed where three roads met. That is why I began with the idea of Propompoi, the procession, right? The, the people coming with supplication. So therefore, we find that 
in this journey, he was killed where three roads meet. And here we find that some of the sources, especially Iskelian sources, Iskelians in his place refer to the place where a grave of Demeter or Persephone may be seen. A Demeter Persephone Rabakatimo. These are actually associated with the spirit of the earth. They are, in a sense, earth mothers. Right? Demeter and Persephone. So therefore, this comes to be associated with the dark aspects of the Homeric tradition. And this comes to be completely changed by Sopathis. Sopathis here brings about Apollo. Right. So therefore, no longer the three roads no longer meet at Pontai, but at Tolia. Two to different other places actually have been uh, brought up here. It's no longer the uh, place of uh, no longer the place where we come across the grave of Demeter and Persephone, which is a place sacred to the Irinis. I refer to Irinis. And here we find that it has been changed, and so far we say that it is associated with, the place is associated with Apollo, and that's why he changes the place. He brings it to another place called Daulia, D-A-U-L-I-A, where the temple of Apollo is there. So this kind of change actually shows that he is trans, his showing a transference, right? Transference of power from the dark avenging gods of Homer to the Delphian god Apollo. So no longer it is Irenaeus, but it is Apollo. So in this way, he brings about a very distinctive transformation in the in the formation of the play. Now, as time is very short, because I have to go to another program today. Um, So uh, let me let me give you an idea regarding the structure. Um, if you consider the structure of the play, then you will see that there is no scene division, nothing of the kind, because it couldn't be for practical reasons. It was open air. If you look at the uh, stage then you will see that it was absolutely open air. So therefore there was no scope for the uh, screen and all that, act division, scene division. These were not possible. So therefore, they had to make another kind of arrangement. And that's why they actually, as Aristotle has mentioned, in his six constituents of tragedy song. And there, here, Aristotle in his definition of tragedy says, uh, a tragedy then is the imitation of an action that is serious and also as having magnitude complete in itself. In language, now consider this, in language with pleasurable accessories, each kind brought in separately in the parts of that work. This part is very important. 
that actually gives us an idea regarding the dramatic structure. He said that what is pleasurable accessory is there. He says a little later, here by language of pleasurable accessory, I mean that with rhythm and harmony of song. Here again, Aristotle version mellows, M E L O S, mellows the song. Uh, super added. So it is not just the action. The actio part is also super added with the mellows part. Hmm. So he says, I made that with rhythm and harmony or song super added. And by the kinds separately, he said that there should be songs super added. And again, he says that there should be a separation. They should be brought in separately. What does he mean by that? I mean that some portions are worked, are worked out with verse only and others in turn with song. So that means very clearly he says that there are two parts. One part is the song and the other part is the action, dramatic action. So it is in this way, praxis and melos, that they go together. Hmm. So therefore, when we look at a Greek tragedy or an imitation of a Greek tragedy, you will find this kind of structural this, uh, I mean, decisiveness. For instance, if you look at Milton Samson and Barnes, it's the same kind of thing. So there also we find, now what is this called? Now this division, I'll come into more details, but let me just first of all tell you about this division in their details. That is Stasimon and Epeisotoio. E-P-E-I-S-O-T-O-I-O-N. I'm sorry. Thank you. Epeisotoyon, E-P-E-I-S-O-D-O-I-O-N. E-P-E-I-S-O-D-O-I-O-N. Episodeion 1. Episodeion means Buddha is the episode. Slice of action. One slice of action. The first slice of action. Episode. That is the first time I'm going to go to the first time. The first time I'm going to go to the first time. The first time I'm going to go to the first time. Are you all here? Then the priest begins to elaborate. Right. Actually, this kind of stage. This is called Parachore Jema, P-A-R-A-C-H-O-R-E-G-E-M-A, Parachore Jema, means extra statement. An extra statement you will come across in many parts of this play. The additional part, the extra statement, sometimes it is being born as if they are, I mean, working as a fourth actor, an actor got a poor actor. So therefore, it is here that the priest begins to talk, begins to describe the critical situation, the onrush of the, of the disease and the death of people. So with this, he comes up. That is actually, this part is actually parodos. Should have have a prologus, P-R-O-L-O-G-U-S, prologus. Prologus and Bhaga, I should have called it. So, P-R-O, L-O-G-U-S, Prologus, followed by a phase of the year one. Ever from the Dako, from the text that we follow, from the Dekibabe, get after this, it is followed by the first episode. Right. The first episode. And this is followed by Ever Shuru Hoche, Yasima. Stasiman. This Stasiman is again divided into two parts. 
মানে মনে রাখবে এই এসকেলিয়ার কোরাস এগুলো পরে যদি সময় হয় তাহলে বলবো সেটা হচ্ছে যে ইন গ্রিক স্টেজ followed by his casimant 2 followed by episode 3 followed by his casimant 3 episode 4 casimant 4 exodus nishkraman so therefore you can see that this is how it goes on so this is the general basic structure and this is the kind of structure that you will always notice in other imitations of Greek tragedy. That means, I've, I've been referring to Milton's Samson Gonites, Agonistus. There also we come across the same kind of pattern. And the Stasi, 12, out of them one was the Coric leader, and other first part of the Stasiman, of the Coric song, will be sung by one group and others will remain silent. The Barodon will be heard, তাদের ছজন গাইছে ছজন শুনছে তারপরে এগেন দে টেক আপ দা আদার্স দা রেস্ট অফ দা সেক্স দে বিগিন টু টেক আপ এবং কি বলে স্ট্রোফি অ্যান্ড অ্যান্টি স্ট্রোফি রাইট ইফ ইউ লুক অ্যাট দা ট্রোফি ওয়ান স্ট্রোফি টু অ্যান্টি স্ট্রোফি টু আই হ্যাভ দিস এডিশন উইচ ভেরি ওয়ান্ডারফুলি ক্রিয়েটস দিস সো দেয়ার ফোর ইউ ক্যান সি দেয়ার ফোর দ্যাট ইট ইস very neatly structured very neatly structured it's not just writing a play like anything but writing a play so therefore you can see i can just give you a line in parables now this is followed by epics of the one epics of the one to line number 261 to 462 I'm giving you the division of Professor Arts in Jain, which is still regarded as the classic of, for his analysis of Greek tragedy. So, episode 1, line number 261 to 462, followed by Scassiman 1, line number 463 to 512, followed by episode 2, Line numbers 513 to 862. Then followed by Stasiman 2. 863 to 910. Again, Episodion 3. 911 to 1085. It is here in this episode that we come across the anagnosis, the messenger comes, and the discovery begins. And this is the passage which leads to anagnosis. Hmm. And stanza, uh, sorry, uh, Stasiman 3, 1086 to 1109. 1086 to, and then, at page of year 4, anagnosis comes up. That was leading to anagnosis. Now here, the Theban shepherd actually appears and he begins his speech and exposes everything. Hmm. So therefore, that is the final anagnosis followed by peripety. Because as Aristotle says that as soon as the anagnosis begins, peripety follows fast, immediately. So therefore, stanza four, uh, sorry, statement four, lamentation, right, lamentation. Actually, all Greek tragedy lamentations. 
that there is a very wonderful word for this. However, this is called Anthesteria. Yeah, you know. And this and, uh, uh, Testament Pope 1186 to 1222. What did that say? Testament 4, 1186 to 1222. Finally, followed by Exodus. 1223 to end. So this is the structure. And it is here that we find that the Pentateria has been established. Um, the sense of lamentation. Actually, every Greek tragedy is a prolonged lamentation. It's a ritual lamentation. So that's why you will have to read the play with that frame of mind. And there is a wonderful Greek word called commos. And again, though comedy commos now, a direct word. Commos. K O W M O S. Commos. It means frenzied lamentation. And this can be located when Oedipus reappears after self blinding. Now, let me talk about certain things about this will actually clarify the role of the chorus. Uh, actually, before Iskilas started to write, there had been many others, as many as five, trying to write drama. drama just It all developed out of Dionysus. Who was Dionysus? Greek God of Wine. No. That's a later development. What are the words? Keats said, Bakas take a word. Bakas is a Latin formation of Dionysus. And if Bakas take a word, you will agree. Absolutely wrong. Dionysus actually is a suffering god. I mean, but that story, I mean, a gal gal to that one is a gal gal. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he is a rural god. His name is a pointer. What is the meaning of the name? Dio, Nysus. Dio means God, Nysus, trees, God of the trees. He is a rural God, he is a God of vegetation, and this association with wine comes much later. So, what is the boy? Yeah, a Hagen boy, tragic drama of the Greeks, Achato, Etao, Odeka Paul and Paul. So you will get full book, Onik Adeleka, but still. Now, there you will get to know all about Dionysus. Kayami Ermund had Komoda Dichina. So he's the god of the trees, the name itself tells us. And uh, he becomes a god of wine, and also the idea of the phallus, the idea of the phallic song, which comes out of the phallus. Now, there have been two kinds of festivals. One was in the spring, and another was in the winter. And in both cases, a maiden will lead along with the priest. The spring festival or the winter festival, whatever it is, everywhere, everywhere we find that, everywhere we find that the maiden, along with a palace, carried aloft the head, along with the priest, and the rural people, they are each Grecian arm, Tatekhanika Ilya Babel, 
So all of them actually are proceeding towards the temple of worship. Okay. Um, actually, after God of the Lord, I think he had the Lord for the Lord on it to hobby. I'm on the show me after Papa Dutchie. And I'll see that in the temple they did not worship. The temple was considered to be the house of God. They would worship outside. So therefore, this externality of religion, all of them are, as they reach there, there is a platform in front of the temple. There they, I mean, worship the God. And then on that platform, a group of singers, right, are only those. And these singers will now begin to sing what? The subject? The life of Dionysus. Thus, in this spring festival, actually it is said that from the spring festival, rose up So therefore, in the spring festival, they would sing this Aoidos or Kuros. Actually, Oden Bhasha Shedat Choros, C H or that. Eight of them excel motto letter. So the chorus would now the majesty that we uh, that we know is Aryan. Song in praise of God. D I T H Y R A M D. Dithiran. Meaning song in praise of God. Now, this actually started with Ariel. And it was always, the essential subject was the story of Dionysus and especially the suffering God. Right. On the one hand, he is a suffering God, he is being tortured, he is being atrociously, violently tortured by different agencies, that is one side. But the other side is the jubilance of the God. The jubilant adventures of the God, as Euripides refers to him in his play Phineasy, there he refers to Dionysus' a journey even up to India. On a kitchen military logic, Megastin said, Ta in the garden of the Polo, Tanadekurabe, the Megastin is saying, Well, what are these people doing? They are worshipping a kind of God which has a palace and all that, and there is a lot of intoxication. So this is perhaps the Indian Dionysus, right? So these are some of the, I mean, info, uh, pieces of information that I just shared with you. So Arian actually did one thing. It was all, for, I mean, song. It was song, the poetic song. But Arian introduced for the first time spoken verses, here and there, choto choto, small spoken verses. And who will speak? Because there are, I mean, long line of singers. And who will speak? The leader of the group. And to whom? He will speak as a mode of commentary to the audience, to the people, religious people who are listening, or explaining it to the fellow singers. It I think to put home a chorus and function that the power to That means it creates a bridge between the stage and the audience. It's a commentary on the exit. Um, 
for the first time, he introduces an actor. It was all song. The priest is also part of the singing group. I, I'm not the priest, the head of the group. The head of the chorus is also part of the singing group. But he, for the first time, introduces an actor. This is number one. That means who will be the actor? A leader of the group. At a cannot work a body as the Bushabi. Introduction of an actor. The actor is the leader of the Koik group. Puraste je leader je, the Ganga je, the Polichalona Koche, she got up. He is the first actor. Right? And after that, the second importance given to spoken conversations. And it out has to be said, Arikta contribution. The second contribution is importance given to spoken conversations. Number th three, balance between lyricism and drama. They have to bola dorkar. In the tradition of lyricism, this tradition of lyricism actually is associated with the tradition of epic. That is why we find a balance is being created. Certain parts are lyrical, very much lyrical, but lyrical is never dramatic. Because drama, the idea of drama always deals with the objective point projection of the situation. So therefore, and finally, Aryan, which is like a provision in Janathuna Delphi, the Jacono Greek tragedy, Molat, Dekta Babeta, the Chobi, the other comics. I'm a student like a Bohuju Gage, Takon Dekta, Iskila said, played the Boyta, Cheboy Matarupore, at a mask at Chobi, different kinds of masks. Now, why this mask? In every Greek tragedy, apart from the women characters, in every Greek tragedy there will be masks. Why? This was for a practical reason. Because most of these dramatists used to take part in the drama. Hey, Arian is from what they got out of the test piece. Test from the got out of the used to take many roles. This would go change dress and then come back. Then it was found that it's very difficult to take many different kinds of, I mean, uh, uh, makeups. So that's why the mask. The mask of a king, the mask of a slave, the mask of a uh, god. So in this uh, different kinds of masks began to develop. As a result, it created a distance. Right? So now you no longer identify that this is his piece acting. It, is, it becomes very objective. This is a god. That is a king. This is a slave. So it is in this way that they brought about the use of Marx. And after this, after Thespis and Arian, after Arian and Thespis, we find three other dramatists. They were also very, very important in their own time. But, but they, but uh, the thing is we don't, we didn't, we th could not really get any of their things. We have some, we have just references, but we have not been able to see their things. Now, I, I just give you the names of the, uh, of, of the other dramatists. This is Coerilus, C H O E R I L U S, C H O E R I L U S, Coerilus. Then Platinus, P R A T I N A S, Platinus. And then Franichus, P H A, sorry, P H R Y, 
three nitrous, pH Ry, Ni, CH, Ms. So these were the three dramatists. Actually, we have no, not much knowledge about their achievements, but uh, we have some references to Prenigius, the third one, who was very popular as a dramatist, as a dramatist, that is quite clear, from different references. And I will come to Aeschylus, then end with Sophocles. Uh, now, Aeschylus is for the first time brings about the second actor. Eta Monica is a first actor, second actor, third actor, and will hold it. What does it mean? That means it is a way of negating the importance of song, the importance of the chorus. Adeki ho chilo, Aryan haro, Thespi haro, there is a line of choric singers. And they are doing everything for you. And it is always the story of Dionysus, the god. So naturally you cannot really bring in characters. Whom will you bring in as character? So that's why you can't bring the characters. But it is Ischylus who for the first time brings in human characters. It is no longer the story of Dionysus. Dionysus goes to the background. Dionysus remains as an agent of inspiration. But nothing more than that. Here we, for the first time, find Aeschylus writing on the story of the traditional human myths, the story of the stories as told by Homer in his epics. So therefore, in this manner, we find that he introduces the second actor. But the first actor, Tero, look. The first actor remains the Koryk leader. The Koryk leader is the first actor. And then naturally, the, naturally, the stage changes. This hot, hot shoe stage. Previously, there had been the holy singers. Right. They used to do everything. And here we find the holy things. Right. And what does Isidas do? Isidas takes them back. Right. If it is the story of Agamemnon, and the character comes here. Right. And the poet leader becomes poet. He stands here. He talks to the character. So therefore, the poet leader is the first actor and the character becomes more oh, the better. So we find that the first actor is the leader of the chorus and the second actor and the second actor is the character himself. So it is in this way that we find that the role of chorus comes to be minimized. Further minimization will come in the hands of Sophocles. We are just waiting for that. So therefore, I'm just trying to be very fast, uh, Aeschylus actually gives us the second actor and then Aeschylus, Aeschylus on the first time shows that the epical and the lyrical should be replaced by the dramatic, especially in the songs of chorus as well. That's why he minimizes the role of the song. He minimizes the role of the role of song, thereby he shows the replacement of the epical and the lyrical genre by the dramatic genre. And the third contribution, 
he for the first time draws our attention from orchestra to stage right from orchestra to stage and the kobe is in stage also and the length of chorus also comes to be diminished bishal lomba lomba tao ache tumra isila jodi poro dekhte chorus gulo shobhi besh long the story has shifted from dances to the human agents and finally iskilas brings about a sense of grandeur and loftiness so this is how he does as i don't have much time i will just hurry through some of my points uh, let's come to sophocles sophocles actually does uh, That's why you will find that there may be in King Oedipus two actors speaking together. This is not a restriction act. The actor. they can't speak all together shobai mile ekshathe kotha bolche eta sambhab one has to remain silent so this is how he brings in the third actor and he ends in this manner the long conflict between the chorus and the drama he completely ends যেমন ধরো তোমরা এটাকে জানি না তোমরা কীভাবে করছো একটা জিনিস দেখো ফার্স্ট এপিসোড হইল ফার্স্ট এপিসোড হইল তোমরা যদি দেখো তাহলে সেখানে দেখবে যে এবার ক্রিস্টার এটি পাস দুজনে কথা বলে যাচ্ছে এইগুলোকে বলে স্টিকোমিথিক স্টিকোমিথিক ডায়লগ ছোট ছোট লাইনে কথা বলছে মানে কুইক কোয়েরি অ্যান্ড কুইক রেসপন্স ওয়াই বিকজ ইট স্পিডস অফ দ্য অ্যাকশন ইটস বিকজ অফ দিস দ্যাট দে আর ডুইং ইট সো দে ফর এনিমাস এ সেন্ট ফর ইনস্টেন্স ও লর্ড অ্যাপল মেড হিজ জয়েস লুকস ফোর শ্যাডো অফ দি জয়েস নিউজ হি ব্রেন্স Then the priest says, as I surmise his welcome, or else his head would not be crowned with very red laurels. So it is in this manner we find that he speaks of the action through the stichometric conversation. So this is how it comes to an end. And the significance of Koi codes, that comes to be completely diminished. And action in this way was spread across the entire stage because we have three characters speaking so that's why it's for the first time that we find that action begins to spread over the entire stage uh, and also yes he for the first time completely giving uh, uh, i mean does a way great the three logic system the three logic system which was there and which is made popular by Aeschylus but he completely destroys that and humanization of tragedy and another he raised the number of the Koenig singers from 12 to 15 and he was the first that he brought the Phrygian music on stage. A Phrygian music, what was it? 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 You know, you know, you know, you can read Plato's The Republic, where he is commenting 
in, chapter, in book two, where he is commenting on the functions of music in society. So let me st stop today. And uh, if there is another chance, I would love to come back. Thank you very much for your patient listening to me.